If it's work you need. Love. One of the most confusing and powerful parts of the human experience. They say that love is blind. But it's hard not to disagree when you catch a glimpse of a hunk like this guy. And behind him is Joe Joman. Who has recently had some love troubles of his own. If you ask Joe, he'd probably tell you that his one true love is the throne of the High King of Skyrim which he's making steady progress towards claiming. However, it's obvious that Joe's been feeling lonely lately. The kind of loneliness that a bubble bath with Feindall can't even fix. Adopting Lucio was a start, but Joe has unfinished business at the altar. He needs a wife, someone who could carry his burdens, no, not you, Lydia, and help him ascend to the throne as king and queen. When it comes to looking for love, Joe could think of only one place to go. The ramshackle refuge of rats and romance, Riften. Now, where is that fine lady residing within this town? Is that her? Oh yeah, it is. Mule, the lioness. Now that's a real Nord woman. What do you need, bud? Talking about the Riften's Thieves Guild. To call it a guild is ridiculous. How can people who would betray one another over a gold coin be considered part of an association? They're the mm. worst kind. Even the Dark Brotherhood abides by a strict set of rules and tradition. True. These Dark Brotherhood greater than Thieves Guild. What do you think? Completely agree, Mjol. 100%. You know, I'm beginning to respect you. Other than Eren, you seem to be the only other person I've met I might be able to trust. After sweet-talking Mule a little bit, she asked a favor of us. My travels have taken me from High Rock to Valenwood, elsewhere to Morrowind, and all points in between. Wow. Why, why are you in the armpit of Skyrim, then? You and I are alike. We seek challenge and great fortune. Ain't that the truth. But for me, that's where the similarities end. I'm sure we have more in common than just that. Well, we could talk about all of our similarities over, like, you know, dinner at the B and Barb or something. It would be a fool's errand. Alright, what, hap what happened to your sword? It was lost years ago in a defenseless newborn within the Dwemer ruin of Messincha left. Hmm. So you're saying there's a sword that I could find and that would make you like me more? Tread carefully, friend. Those same ruins almost took my newborn. Even though Mule declined our dinner date, it would be a fool's errand. Friend zoned us. Tread carefully, friend. And stays within five feet of this freak, Aaron, who she keeps talking about. It seemed like Joe might have a shot if he retrieved Grimsever from Mazinsha left, which lay in the far north near Dawnstar. After wasting a good 15 minutes failing to shop for winter clothes, we hopped on a carriage to Dawnstar and prepared for dastardly dwarven delights. Real quick, be sure to subscribe and check out the Twitch channel where we stream these live every Sunday. This episode was our first as a Twitch affiliate, and I couldn't have done it without all the support from you guys. Thanks. Now back to Dwarf Fortress. Alright, bandits. You know, I was looking for some of you guys. Got any fur armor down there? Wait, why are they acting like they can get up here? There's no shot, right? Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out! Oh my god, Frost! Uh, I want to shoot my horse. All right, no problem. We got the animals to take care of all the business. <laughs> we found the winter clothes we spent forever trying to buy within two minutes of adventuring and proceeded inside. Honestly, these bandits were living a nice, cozy little life out here. So glad I could come in and ruin it. Just a scratch. Oh my, what is happening? Is he parrying my bow shots? <laughs> what was that? Wow, this is like the worst <laughs> lunchbox I've ever seen. It's a root, an apple, and a potato in a bucket. That guy literally had his Nordic Lunchable packed in there. Oh, a scroll of mass paralysis? Oh, I'm, I'm pocketing that. Oh, uh, oh, <laughs> sorry about that. Oh my god, did she just shoot me through a wall?
Jesus, I was about to say prayer check. <laughs> and I got shot in the head through a wall. Oh. We actually can't pray indoors. I just remembered that. Kinnereth, the god of nature, doesn't like it when we pray inside. At least we've succeeded in disappointing our god. That's almost as good as praying to them. Carrying too much to be able to run. Uh, Fandal, carry this random steel axe I have in my inventory. While I crawl to you on all fours. Take that, please. Oh, he's equipping it. Oh, he liked the looks of that axe. He put it straight on his belt. Oh my god, I think I shot Miko. Look at him go. What a good boy he is. Not even phased. He's surrounded in a 1v3. He just tanks it. Oh, a child's doll. <laughs> Maybe this can finally calm the demon inside Lucia. It was at this moment that Joe first laid his eyes upon a strange dwarven creation, foreign to him as a former professional townie. Killer robots. Oh, I went too close to the bars. <laughs> I think they saw me. Oh, here's the real challenge. A couple of dwarven spheres. Oh my god. Sweet. Hey, those guys weren't too big of a deal. Oh my god, there's a bandit up there that somehow didn't detect me during that. Oh, good boy. <laughs> oh, there's another one. The giant enemy spider. Oh. <laughs> Look at this foul creature. <laughs> Stop hitting my dog. We're stressed. Let me check it out. Oh my god. Okay, you know what? The the discovery of robots is actually stressing Joe out more than I realized. We're <laughs> we're almost halfway up to a heart attack. All right, Joe. It's okay. <laughs> Calm down. Don't, don't have a panic attack or anything. Well, you can have a nap. Here, well, we'll just curl up in a ball in this dark corner here while you reconcile with the existence of robots. Ooh. Doink! This is the big one. Okay, these guys are scared. Miko, Miko, talk to him. Show him what it means to be a, a part of the Joe Joman squad. Oh, look at that being stabbed in the face over and over again with little to no effect that's my boy right there butt scratch what's going on in here huh ah a puzzle joe is known for his puzzle solving skills um pull lever pull other lever more lever. Lever? Uh oh, wait a second. Oh, perfect. Easy clap. A master chest. We got 18 lock picks to do a master lock. Um this could this could maybe happen. Shit. <laughs> we can't pick every lock. So, some things were just not meant to be opened, you know? It's at this point in the dungeon that things took a sinister turn. Oh, and now we see the worst enemies in the game. <laughs> the Falmer. Hey, look, Feindal. It's your brother. Is that, is that racist to elves? <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Well, they are elves, right? Something started happening to Joe. Like he was being somehow corrupted. Oh, I forgot they're blind and deaf. They have no idea I'm over here. His normally warm heart was growing colder and his perspective was narrowing. Yet uh, Joe's polling for the, the elf population for High King just went down like three points after the feigned all remark. <laughs> he was beginning to take issues with the elven race and with the Falmer's disabilities. <laughs> And he just blindly jukes arrows. Okay. Okay. Faint off. Let me. 
Fadal got his, <laughs> his payback. The sudden deterioration of Joe's social awareness was eroding his relationship with Feindal. Alright, Feindal, listen, we need to work together in this, <laughs> in this ruin. I'm sorry for what I said about how you, you definitely do look like all the Falmer, but I apologize for saying it out loud. Let's just work together here. Feindal, do something. Are you, okay, <laughs> he's still not over it. No matter his intentions, Joe couldn't help but keep making things worse. Still Is it your clothes? I bet it's because I put him in this scandalous outfit. Here. Here, Feindal. Let me make it up to you. Not only will I give you your original armor back, but I will also give you this elven armor that I have in my possession. You like elven- you're an elf, right? Put on these elven gloves. I'm <laughs> I'm kind of leaking back into the elf discrimination, but is that better? He didn't even put him on. I definitely just insulted him again. <laughs> now this is the part where you start shooting arrows too, Feindal. Okay. Please. Draw your weapon. We will die if you don't. Oh, there we go. Finally when his life is threatened. You know what, why don't you handle that, Feindal? Clearly something was off. Joe would never normally be this mean to his bubble bath buddy. In the midst of this friendship crisis, we took another stress nap where we hit level 16 and got the power to create tripwires. Alright, I'm gonna try to use our new stealthy prowess on the next Falmer I see. Ah, you, right there. Uh oh, it's coming too fast. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Okay, it, they're blind and deaf, I th or no, they're just blind. Now come this way. Yeah, Feindal, bait him. Bait him over. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> Kick him while he's down. Perfect. Now instead of bullying Feindal, Joe was bullying the poor Falmer. Oh my god, there's still another one. Oh, I'm better using this bow than you are. Oh, too easy. <laughs> Listen, the, the fact that it, Joe is better at using a bow than them has nothing to do with them being blind, alright? He was saying that because he's a skilled archer. This is Joe's villain arc. No, no, no. It's just, uh, it's just out of context. It's all out of context. They're misunderstandings. Hello? Wait, they're all just standing over there. Like, what, is, <laughs> what is that guy doing? Well, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> They'll never see this coming. <laughs> Let's see how they get around this one. Oh. Ah, you idiot. Oh my god, it tripped Miko. <laughs> no, Miko, you're not supposed to fall for that. What are you shooting at? Don't shoot at Miko. Feindal, what are you aiming? Oh my god. Oh! I didn't even see him there yet. Okay, I know what we were, I know what we did wrong. That guy tried to post up right here to shoot me with a bow. <laughs> Why don't you try that again? Oh god, they smell me. They're using echolocation. Oh, he tripped. Shoot him while he's down, Feindal. Okay, I'm staying in cover. Feindal, they're, they're your friends. You, you talk to them. No shot! Oh, look at them. They're so stupid, they don't see me. Beautiful. Oh, you know what? I kind of see the issue now. You guys probably would have had a better time killing me if you opened your eyes. <laughs> they didn't They didn't even try that, it's crazy. Listen, when I, when, when Joe Joman said that the Falmer will never see him coming, he meant, he meant, you know, metaphorically, not physically. It was all a metaphorical statement about the, um, the short-sightedness of the Falmer. <laughs> not the literal short-sightedness, to be clear. That was a dramatic death. It, like, went through into his mouth and out his neck. What a poor soul. Now he can't taste things. He lost another sense. Stress check. 97! Dude, this cave is the most stressful thing Joe has ever experienced. <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. 
You're nice and safe when you lay in your dirty hay pile. Between the discriminatory remarks and the massive increase in stress, it was clear that something in this cave was affecting Joe's mind. Oh, Joe Joman's resolve is being tested. Hopeless. Wait, we reached stress 100? At this point, the mental strain had become so severe that it blurred our vision. Still, we pushed on, not out of hate for these disgusting creatures, but out of love for Mule. Is that what I think it is? I'm trying to s squint my semi-racist eyes. Well, if it if it bleeds, we can kill it. Oh wait, these things don't bleed. <laughs> Alright, jury's still out. Oh, that looks painful. I wish I could see what's going on right now. <laughs> Are you doing okay, Feindall? Oh, he's not doing okay. Um, okay. Wait. Okay. Oh, this sounds bad. Oh, nice. Oh, and our vision is returned to normal. We're no longer hopeless. We, we've cleared our head. Hey, and you know what? Good job, Fangdahl. I'm proud of you. It seems as though the Centurion had been exerting some kind of mind control or uh, corrupting Joe's thoughts. Let me let me look in here. Oh, here here it is. The the racism core. I'm going to take this so it can't hurt anyone ever again. We then grabbed Mule's sword and made our way back to Riften to share the good news. What do you need? Mule, I have located Grim Sever. Astonishing! Rarely in my travels have I encountered those who possess skills equal to your own. Joe, she wants you, bro. I'd be honored to accompany you in your travels for a time. Well, I would like you to accompany in my travels, Mule, but not not my adventurous travels. My more of my travels in life. We scurried over to the love shack to buy a rosary and prepared to make our move. All right, now we paid extra for the axe body spray. I think we're ready to uh, ready to riz up Mule wherever she is. Mule, my dear, madam, where be you? Okay, fine. I'll go to Aaron's house. Where's Aaron's stupid house? Over here. All right, Aaron. I know you've been living living in the friend zone this whole time. Let me show you how you really talk to a lady. An amulet of Mara? You're not married? Surprising. Hmm, interested in me, are you? I am. I'd be glad to stand by your side until the divines take us. <laughs> Look at Aaron's face right now. <laughs> this is the face of a defeated man. I will. Together, then. Together. To celebrate our victory over Aaron, we headed to the tavern the night before the wedding. After all, no wedding is complete without a bachelor's party. Thane doll, these are for you. Here, Miko. I got this for you, buddy. Cheers, boys. To my soon-to-be married life. Yeah, I didn't. They didn't drink it, but I'll assume their spirit was in it. After getting groovy. All right, this one's a little ditty I call, I'm getting married, losers. Devella's blessing to you. We headed to the temple about one hour before the wedding without sleeping. I'm sure you'll do fine, Joe. Just take a breather. Nico, do you mind if I... I know you're not going to drink these. Can I just have one of these? Or maybe two? Oh, okay. Uh, hello, Maramel. I'm here for the wedding. Go ah, here's the proud groom now. Let's begin the ceremony. It was Mara that first gave birth <gasps> to all of creation. <gasps> it's from her uh, love Joe? Us that we first learned to love one another. <laughs> from this love that we learned that a life Joe, was get up! Life, no life at all. <laughs> Wake up! Are we, <laughs> are we dead? I can't move anything. In the next. I do. Now and forever. Oh, sorry, is this where I have to speak? Do you agree to be bound together in love now and forever? Uh, yeah, now and forever. Under the authority of Mara, the divine of love, I declare this couple to be wed. 
Perfect. Almost as if she was upset about something, Mule left the wedding without speaking to us. We eventually caught her leaving Aaron's house after the door had been locked for a full day. We reminded her that we're married and that she lives in Bree's home with us now. But she looked like she was having trouble settling in, almost like she missed something. So we bought her some new home decorations to cheer her up. Oh honey, I'm hot. Son of a bitch.